What's up? Hi, everybody. Um, I think today I'm going to do this in a chair. Usually I always stand, so I think this is very comfortable here, my nice chair. And so it's been a while since the last time I made a video. And in the last week, I actually got three messages. And based on these three messages, I'm going to make the topic of today's video. And basically, all the messages had something in common and they really touched me in a sense that it was nice people writing, describing their life basically as non-existent and the underlying theme was that they feel physically completely mobilized um, throughout their whole life. So when I think back a couple of years ago, what I used to Google a lot or try to research is one topic that I think is widely overlooked, um, or that again, the advice I don't think is very useful, and that's uh, emotion and how to deal with emotions and where are they coming from and so on. So, the whole kind of realm of especially negative emotions and how to get rid of the pain that's kind of eating you up uh, inside. And so, I thought I'd make another mini series like last time I did about identity. So this time uh, it's going to be about emotion and depending on how long this gets and, and all the information I want to give out, um, we'll see how many videos this is going to be. But yes, yeah, so it's about negative emotion in particular, because it's a positive emotion that I don't think, I think most people are very good with, the positive, with positive emotions and so we're going to try to focus a little bit more on the negative emotions. And so, the very first thing, and basically I want to make this video about how to deal with emotions, but I want to very quickly touch about the, the issue of how come we actually feel these emotions. I'm going to make this very brief, if there's more interest on that topic, uh, I can make another video on that one. But so, the basic, uh, the, basis, I, the basic idea behind why we feel any emotions is because we have certain rules and the rules we have inside beliefs, basically, are what determines whether we feel one way or another way. For example, if you feel the emotion of uh, anger, and you take two different people, some person might feel angry about very, very small things, and the other person has a much wider tolerance for anger, meaning it takes a lot to piss them off, whereas this year, immediately snaps out and gets very angry. And so the emotion anger is the same, you might think that people universally get angry at the same pace or because of the same reason, but that's not the case. Some people get angry very easily, and some people get angry almost never. So, what is the difference between those two people? Again, oh, some people might get um, offended very easily, and others are much more playful. Some people might feel loved much more easily, and others, it doesn't matter what you do, they never feel that level. So, the only difference between those two people are the rules inside their head of how they would like to be treated and what needs to happen in order for them to feel the emotion. So one thing that has, a big, has had a big impact in my personal life is respect, for example. I have um, this belief about when someone stops communicating with me and let's say we have an argument and someone shuts down completely and they stop communicating, I feel disrespected, right? So for me, my idea of being respected means communication, and it's important um, to talk things straight, you know? If someone just walks away in the middle of an argument, it's very disrespectful. The same way, someone else might feel, for example, raising your voice is disrespectful. For me, not. If someone raises their voice, that's normal for me, because I grew up an environment where people need, like to be loud um, when they have arguments. So the opposite is true for me. If someone shuts down, it's quiet. It's kind of like I get frustrated about that. It's, it's a little bit disrespectful. And so my idea, my rule of respect is you don't shut down. You don't, you don't stop communicating. And if someone does that, I feel disrespected. And so what's really interesting is actually when we feel any emotion, Let's say we're angry at someone else. We're actually not angry at the other person. 
we're angry about someone by our, ourselves, basically, um, someone else violating the rules we have for ourselves. So if you were to change your internal rules, the same instance could happen, but you would not feel angry, right? So if I were to change my rule of respect, even if the other person shuts down, I could learn to appreciate that, and I would not feel disrespected. I don't feel disrespected because of the other person. I feel disrespected because of breaking the rule that I have for respect, right? And the same applies to anything else. Um, if you tell someone what needs to happen for you to feel loved, some people might say um, they need to hear it very often. They need someone. They need someone to tell them that they love you. And for other people, it doesn't matter. It's like you can say whatever you want. You need to show me, right? So their rule for for being loved is different. If someone says it all the time, it doesn't mean anything to them. They need to see it. They need to. They need action. And other people need to be touched. For example. They don't care about materialistic stuff. They don't care about hearing it. They need to be whole. They want to be whole, held. Um, they want to be touched. So if you don't touch them, they feel unloved. And so again, it is not the actual problem. is not with the other person. It's with the rules we have about when to feel an emotion. And so this is a completely different topic, and it's much broader than that. Where these rules come from, but um, just something to keep in mind. Um, during this video that whenever you feel an emotion it's because there's some kind of violation of the internal rules you have and sometimes even you violate the rules yourself and then you might feel things like uh, regret for example right regret comes from you violating your own rule and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a, in a second and so sometimes you then, these rules get violated and you start feeling an emotion very, very strongly. And sometimes these emotions are very, very negative. And most people are very, very poor at actually identifying their own emotions. If I asked you when you feel very bad, which emotion can, do you feel right now? Could you pinpoint exactly which emotion it is? Is it sadness, depression, anxiety, worry? Like, do you know the different nuances in each emotion? Do you know where in the body you feel them? Depending on the emotion, you feel different in the body. For example, anger, the emotion of anger, is mostly up here in your face, in your head. It goes down in your upper body, to your fists. This is the anger part where you feel, right? So, uh, it's mostly in your, in your head, in your upper body. And then you have other emotions such as sadness, which is in your throat, you feel it here, your throat, and it goes down to the lower part of your, your abdominals. And sometimes you cannot eat, for example. Anxiety is even lower, right? It's this part here. And depending on emotion, you have also uh, physical responses. You clinch your jaws, for example, right? When you, get, uh, when you don't want to feel an emotion, you clinch your jaw, which makes it hard to go through. And so, what, what most people do is they try to fight an emotion. And if you try to fight a negative emotion, it does not work. What you're actually doing is you're stacking another negative emotion on top of that. Because let's say you're sad, and you don't want to feel sad, so you try to fight it. And you kind of get frustrated because it doesn't go away. So now you have sadness, and on top of that, you get frustrated, right? And now on top of being frustrated, you get angry. And so, now you have three emotions, they kind of mix into one, and now you feel all of them. And now I ask you which emotion you feel, and you have problems kind of pinpointing what it is that you're actually feeling, because you've mixed up so many negative emotions, that they're all enrolled, right? And it's not, it's not only one thing. In the beginning, maybe you were only sad, but then you got frustrated and angry about it, right? And then you get, and by the way, whenever you feel sad and you cannot get out of that, at some point you will get angry. You will get pissed at not, be, at not being able to get out of the sadness. And once you're tired of getting pissed, you will become sad again. It's very interesting how this thing works. And for most people, when something bad happens, depending on their priorities, they either get first sad and then angry, or they get first angry and then sad. 
When someone treats you badly, for example, do you first get sad or do you first get angry at the other person? And again, depends on your rules and um, depends on your values. Different topic again. So, this is a little bit of the introduction of the emotional things. And there are a lot of ways to kind of snap out of the emotion instantly. For example, if you feel a um, negative emotion, you can take a partner and have them put their finger on top in front of you and then let them move their finger around, right? And you feel the emotion all the time and you keep your head straight and you're just following the finger with your eyes. You do that for like a couple of minutes, the emotion will be gone. You will not be able to feel it, like the intensity that you had previously. And the reason for that is because in order to go into an emotion, your eyes are kind of locked into certain places. And if you set your eyes through everywhere, you kind of break the pattern of that. And so that kind of gets you out of the emotion. But anybody who's watched my videos a little bit knows that I don't like to work on the on the manifestations of the causes. I, I don't want to give quick fixes and techniques how to get out of that stuff, even though I know that's what most people want. But the problem is that the emotion is still there and the cause as well. And what you're again doing is you're trying to avoid the emotion by getting out of that. Now, one thing um, I still want to point out, because I know that sometimes life gets quite tough. And I've been in a position where a couple of years ago um, I've been in a lot of pain. It's kind of when your whole world falls apart, let's say, at the same time. So your relationships, uh, your family wise, maybe your career, sometimes life can be a bitch. And all of these things fall apart at the same time. And it puts you into a state where you don't really think, you're completely mobilized and you don't know how to get up with that. And you're in so much pain that you're throwing up and uh, you, you're not able to eat, right? And basically, three, four years ago now, even five years ago maybe, um, I was on a trip and I, I don't want to get into the details, but it was one of the most painful times I ever had in my life. And I ended up throwing up the whole week and I lost 10 kilos. So it's like what, 20 pounds, I think. In the end, I was uh, 60 kilos. So, and I'm not a short person, I'm not a short person, so I was 60 kilos, I was extremely skinny, I couldn't eat, every time I ate something, my stomach felt so much pain that it came straight like out again, I was throwing up the whole week, and I couldn't get past, I couldn't work, I couldn't focus, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything, uh, it was horrible, and, and worse than that, I, I, I had no idea how to get out of that, so, if you right now in this painful state where you really need to um, get out of that and you have no idea what to do, I'll give you one thing that really works uh, in the short term. And especially when you have this emotion in your stomach and you cannot eat or anything, or you cannot focus. Go and have a cold shower. Go into the shower, make it cold, and then be like for one or two minutes. and. If you feel like shit, and it's really painful, and you feel everybody, I can guarantee you, this will change your state. And the emotion will come back. It will come back, because you're not actually dealing with it. But it kind of helps you to make the day a little easier, until you kind of get to a level where you can deal with that. Just, it, I know that sometimes it can be so hard, and you feel so much pain that it's almost unbearable. So if you're at that level, go into the shower, make it really cold, and stay under there for one or two, three minutes until you're really like shivering, freezing. Do that. It will, it will change your state. And you, after that, you're also able to eat a little bit and stuff like that. So if that's the current level, go do that. But otherwise, I, uh, I suggest you do um, what's coming next. And so <clears throat> basically, now we get into that. It's quite a long introduction to what I actually want to talk about. But for me, it's important. If you guys don't like me making this video so long and explaining all the things around that, please let me know as well. If you, if you prefer like uh, rapid fire things, five minute videos, kind of things, if you feel like this, do this. If you prefer that kind of style, which 
I, I really don't. But if you if you like that better, let me know, and then I can make more short videos about. Okay, you feel this, do this. But it kind of again, most of the time it doesn't work on the actual causes. So you're just working on the effects of the causes. And I mean, there's a lot of techniques and things you can do to eliminate the emotion um, on the spot. But again, on the long term, I don't know how healthy that is. So I, I would encourage you to do something else. And to do something else, what could you do? Well, the obvious. So if you look at um, the steps that most people, or the way that most people deal with emotions, there's four. Number one is people tend to avoid emotions, so you don't want to feel them. You distract yourself and um, whatever it is, you know, you don't want to feel rejected, so you distract yourself, you don't, or you don't put yourself into a spot of where you can't be rejected. What's the problem with that, avoiding emotion, for example, rejection? The problem with that is you'll never be successful. Because if you keep avoiding that, or you, you're afraid of that emotion, um, you never put yourself into the spot. And so, basically, avoiding emotions is not a good way to go. Right? You have to embrace them, not, not avoid them. So the second way people do is they deny and then disassociate from the emotion. So let's say you feel very bad, but you're telling yourself, everybody else, I'm okay. You know, you go, you go outside, these people. You know, it's people that something really bad happens, but they're still smiling. And they go, it's like, hey, how are you doing? Maybe someone died, and they're like, the next day they're smiling. And you're kind of like, why are you smiling? Like, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm really good. I'm fine. And then they go home, and they decide they're dying. So this is the second way, you know. It's denying the actual emotion, not accepting what happened. It's denying it and then disassociating it by saying that you're fine or talking, I'm fine, I'm good. Um, the third way is how people use that is to get connection with other people. So you might compete with someone else. Let's say you're going to, uh, through a rough time and you actually like to talk about that. And then someone comes along, oh, that's nothing. I feel even worse than that, you know. People get pissed, really angry, when they're in a very bad emotional state and you make it less important. So you go there and it's like, ah, you, don't, you don't feel any negative stuff. Compared to me, I feel much, much more pain. That goes to people. And it's like, no way, I'm, I'm in much more pain. And then people compete into, in this realm of like, who's actually in more pain or who's had the worst thing happen to them and all this kind of like nonsense, basically. So people use that as to compete. And um, the fourth way is the healthiest way. And that's actually to learn and to utilize whatever comes to you and what are emotions you, because in order to learn and utilize from them you need to know what are they actually telling you so I'm gonna go through the most common negative emotions what they stand for what they're telling us and so how to get rid of them right how to use them in order to progress in our life and actually use them as something helpful so whenever the emotion comes in you know what to do exactly and how to deal with it and so emotions are a call to action but one thing before we get into that is um, one more thing I want to do before we really go step into step into that is to feel the emotion um, really deeply and that's important because most people, again, this will deal partly with how to get, how to deal with the emotion, how to get rid of that, and how to learn, um, learn from the emotion. But before that, sometimes it's important to just lie down on the bed, close your eyes, and just feel the emotion. Just feel it in your body. And most people have never done this. Most people try to distract themselves, well, women are very good at it, actually. Women feel much more, but men, they use their heads and, and they don't want to deal with that. So, you, you need to realize that emotions are like waves, right? They come and they go. They won't stay forever. In your past, you've had bad emotions and you've been through all of them, right? And you made it out of them. You've been very depressed before, and then afterwards came a time where you were less depressed. So you've been through that emotion. You could come, go through that. And so, what, um, 
what I encourage everybody to do whenever you feel an emotion that is quite strong is to lie down and kind of like notice, just notice where you feel the emotion. Notice where it is in your body, right? Is it in your throat? Is it in your chest? Is it in your stomach? Where is it? Actually, we can do this right now. Let's try this. All right, close your eyes, everybody. And think about any negative emotion that you had that maybe an intensity from seven to eight. Don't make it extremely negative. If you can only think about that, fine. And don't make it like a little thing. Make it something that really, you could really feel, right? So, feel the negative emotions, whatever it is. And then realize where it is in your body. Where do you feel it? Right? And don't judge it. For example, don't say, I feel sad because blah, blah. Don't think about the emotion. Just feel it, right? Whatever it is. So, and now, look at it. And describe the shape of it. Which shape is it? Which color is it? How deep inside is it? Is it moving? If so, is it changing form? Is it changing color? For example, in my, my case, I feel yellow, a yellow flow, and it's maybe one or two inches inside. So very, um, um, in my throat, it's yellowish, and it kind of goes down to my chest. And when it goes down to my chest, it becomes more red. And it flows around in a circular manner. And now follow it. Whatever your emotion is, follow it, wherever it goes. How deep is it? Is it changing form? What is it doing? Don't judge it. Don't think about it. Just follow it. Observe it. Don't do anything else. Observe it. Follow it. Don't let it go. Don't let your focus go away from the emotion. Follow it. Now, my emotion, it's getting a little bit blue. And it's more in my stomach now. And I still feel it in my throat as well. It goes down from my throat all the way down to my stomach, mostly in the middle part. And it's a little bit deeper now in my throat than it was before. It's yellowish here, it turns to red, and it's still, it's kind of flowing, it's moving. It's changing. It goes a little bit up again to my shoulders. And follow it. Notice the intensity. Notice the color. Notice the shape. Notice how it's changing, all the time flowing. And don't let it go. Follow it. Where is it now? Where do you feel it now? Which color does it have? How deep inside is it? Describe it. How does it feel? How does it move? Not what it is. Just observe it and describe it. And follow it. Don't let it go. And you can continue this, snap it out. It was just a demonstration. You do this, if you have a very negative emotion, you do this for 10 to 15 minutes. What you will notice is, with time, the emotion gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and then it dissipates, it disappears completely. And what you're actually doing is you're feeling the emotion, right? So, you're not fighting it, you have to feel it. Whatever you fight will, will stay there, right? You have to really get in touch with it because it's part of you. It's a normal part we all feel emotions. So you're supposed to feel them. And once you do that, we can go on to the next step, right? Because you don't want to stay in that emotion. It's not healthy to stay in a negative emotion. It's good to acknowledge it. It's good to feel it. And then to learn from it, utilize it and move on. If you feel sad, what I did back in the days, um, I stayed 